Hello, and welcome to Channel Zero TV with John and John. I'm John. And I'm John. And apologies for the long hiatus, but uh, tonight we're here to bring you the intriguing story and the copyright infringing music of Dean Reed. John, want to talk about Combat Rockstar? Ah, uh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the one and only Red Elvis, Dean Reed, born in Colorado, recruited by Capitol Records in the late 1950s, become the next big teen idol, and in 1973, he turned up in East Germany as the official state-approved rock and roll singer of the Warsaw Pact. Okay, and uh, we will... Uh, have a lot to say about Dean, but before we do, let's share some of his, uh, one of his broadcasts, I believe from, from East Germany or possibly the Soviet Union. Uh, this is Dean Reed singing that old Soviet anthem, Ghost Riders in the Sky. They don't care for the right now when dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rest as he went along his way. When all at once the money heard a red eyed cast, he saw glowing through the rugged skies and up a cloudy draw. Yippee, I hey, yippee, oh. Ghost riders in the sky. They brand the storm fire and their hooves are made of steel. They're hungry, black, and shiny, and their heart but they could feel. I pulled a few and threw him as they thundered through the sky. Saw the riders coming hard, and he heard a mournful cry. Yippee, I hey, yippee, oh. Ghost riders in the sky. The devil's head that crosses in the sky. Yippee, I am. Yippee, I am. Ghost riders in the sky. Ghost riders in the sky. Okay, your typical enthusiastic Eastern European audience. Uh, so, John, want to uh, give a little background to uh, Dean Reed? I mean, he was born in the States, in Colorado, had a, a bit of a, a life in Hollywood. But um, uh, talk about how he wound up in the Eastern Bloc and becoming the, well, one of their most uh, popular pop singers. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, Dean was originally recruited by Capitol Records, I think, in 1958, and they were looking to turn him into the next Frankie Avalon. They were looking to turn him into the next um, Fabian, somebody like that. Now, there's really two types of pop singers. There's either people who put in their 10,000 hours singing and dives, singing back up, selling songs, writing songs, you know, things like that. Or there are people who are essentially recruited by record labels and groomed by, you know, a powerful corporation to become a teen idol. And that was the track that Dean Reed was on. But he never really had a worthwhile hit because while he could play the guitar, while he could sing, while he had a great deal of stage presence, I think, he wasn't a composer. So he was dependent on the output of other people to sort of get on the charts. And for some reason, the right songs were never routed to him. Now, in the early 60s, a couple of his songs charted down in South America, and he very hastily 
organized himself a tour, discovered that he could actually, you know, make some money on that circuit. And he ended up down living down in Argentina at a time when Argentina was ruled by the usual military junta. Now, it's during this period that his politics starts drifting inexorably and inexorably and inexorably leftward. And at some point in the late 1960s, uh, he was deported from Argentina, allegedly because he took an American flag down to the American embassy in Buenos Aires and then very self-consciously in front of a large crowd started washing it with soap and water to wash out the bloodstains that were symbolically on it from the Vietnam War, from the treatment of the American Indians and the treatment of American African Americans, and so on and so forth. Well, they deported him. He ended up in Italy, where he had a comfortable side hustle for a couple of years doing spaghetti westerns. Right. He did He did a number of movies. And, and I, I'm pretty sure he it might have been Chile, where he got uh, in trouble washing the American flag. But, but That's he, right. He, That's right, Chile. I'm sorry. So he had a whole sort of, of political transformation, oh, along with... Uh, Quite career. I mean, he was hugely popular in South America. So the fame that eluded him in, in the United States sort of reached him there. But then politics drove him out, especially as the sort of hunters were coming into into power in the seventies. But then, then in Italy, he did uh, quite a number of, of movies, didn't he? Oh yeah, he's he's in I think a good half dozen spaghetti westerns. It was a good good side hustle for him, and it, it wasn't necessarily a bad career move. I mean, you know, who was who was Clint Eastwood before Sergio Leone got his claws into him? I mean, he was just another good-looking American actor, and, and Dean was, you know, camera-ready, and, you know, as far as he was concerned, he had additional talents. He could sing and play the guitar. And Dean did do some uh, acting in Hollywood as well, so he wasn't just a, a singer pretty face. Yeah, he, he turns up, I think, on Father Knows Best or some of the, one of those types of shows in, in the late 1950s and some of, the, some of the variety shows. But again, because he just didn't have the right songs in his catalog, I mean, he, he just was never really really clicking on that level. I mean, he, he had a bigger career in Italy when he shoot him ups uh, mm -hmm. in the late 60s, early 70s, which is also when I think he made his first tour of East Germany. Right, so let's talk about his... Uh move from, from a spaghetti Western actor in Italy, where he was still politically active, to right. uh, kind of, of throwing himself into the Eastern Bloc. Yeah, well, he, he got recruited to do a little tour in East Germany. The, the audience dug him. Uh, that brought him to the attention of, of Soviet cultural institutions and, of course, the KGB, and he was considered politically uh, safe enough uh, to introduce the Soviet audiences. And, and you know, he, he, he had a huge career behind the Iron Curtain, and he was so much so that he moved to East Germany in, in 1973. Right, and he, he lived there uh, for over a decade that, that, um, where he yeah. was touring throughout the Eastern Bloc to, to large audiences and, and appearing on uh, Soviet TV. I mean, he the, the career that eluded him in, in, in the States, uh, obviously he, he found some of it in South America, but he really kind of was being booked as uh, the Soviet Union's answer to Elvis and the Beatles, who, whose songs he was sort of, of shamelessly ripping off, we should note. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, he was, he, 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 as I said, because, you know, he had no real composition skills, he, he, he was uh, doing basically state-approved covers. So somewhere on YouTube, there's footage of him singing Yellow Submarine down at a marina in, in the Baltic, and, and uh, you know, of course, there was uh, any one of a number of, like, country western songs that were also sort of on that approved list, and uh, also some songs, you know, from... from the late 1950s American rock and roll catalog, things of that nature. What, what, what astonishes me about Dean Reed was he very punctually play, paid his income taxes to the United States government every year. He reported every single penny of his earnings from behind the Iron Curtain, from Italy, from all of it. And he never renounced his American citizenship, although, I mean, very clearly, he's, he's a huge, to, to, to the Soviets, to the Warsaw Pact, he's a propaganda coup. He, Coup because he's you know constantly denouncing his own government and and you know uh, zealously defending uh, uh, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, uh, Berlin Wall, all of it. Well, there's that appearance he did on 60 Minutes, I think, uh, 
in the mid 80s where he was not just uh, you know denouncing uh the US government uh but but supporting things like Berlin Wall and the invasion of Afghanistan so uh even though he was never a party member he was uh, uh, uh certainly threw his lot in on with one side I, I think he was desperate to make some, some kind of comeback to America to take all this, you know, fame that he had, he had accumulated in what has to be the ultimate niche market, I mean, <laughs> if you think about it. I mean, the USSR I mean, is a huge niche market, uh, for, for, especially for that kind of music. And I think he wanted to make some sort of, like, triumphant return to America, but on his own terms as, as a self-proclaimed Marxist-Leninist. And... I mean, we're talking about an interview that went down in 1986. I remember watching it and just simply astonished at, at, at just how naive he was about the state of politics in the United States at that point. No accident that, that he turned up dead, likely a suicide, about six weeks later. Yeah, I was going to say that, that uh, it wasn't long after that interview that uh, he was found uh, in a pool. Um, there's certainly been suspicions about the death, but... Uh, you know, more than likely a suicide. He's been through kind of multiple marriages and, and quite a tumultuous life. Um, but, you know, an intriguing one. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, he was not Oswald, but, you know, certainly that sort of flitting back and forth to different, different uh, sides of the Iron Curtain. And, um, you know, he, he had a hustle that worked. Uh, he sure did. He sure did. Uh, the, the irony here is just sort of hilarious. That I mean, everybody they, they sort of could recruit. They recruited somebody who was on that that Frankie Avalon Fabian treadmill. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's their idea of a performative. You know, individual. They they, they want to set in front of like Soviet youth. It was also intriguing that you know the sort of transgressive art form, uh, rock and roll that the Soviets picked you know, probably the safest artist they could other than some refugee from up with people. Intriguing life. I'm glad you're able to join us to uh, talk a little bit about Dean Reed. There, there's a, a biography of him called uh, Comrade Rockstar that's worth uh, listening to. And I believe that 60 Minutes interview with him might actually be online. Yeah, I think it's on YouTube somewhere. So if you get a chance, you know, sort of learn a little bit more about Dean Reed. But certainly if you get a chance, join us on the next episode of Channel Zero TV.